Two weeks after President Bola Tinubu promised to unify the nation's multiple exchange rates, the CBN has reportedly directed deposit money banks to remove the rate cap on the Naira at the investors' and exporters' window of the foreign exchange market to allow for a free float of the Naira against the dollar and other global currencies. We'll be taking an in-depth look at this on The Breakfast this morning. Nearly 3,800 people died on migration routes within and from the Middle East and North Africa region last year. The highest number since 2017 when 4,255 deaths were recorded according to newly released data from the International Organization for Migration's Missing Migrants Project. This morning, we're going to be looking at how the International Organization for Migration is fighting issues endangering migrants. And we'll be taking a look at the front pages of some national dailies and of the press where we have an analyst join us to look at them critically. You're welcome to The Breakfast. Good morning to you. I am Maureen Menomo Izidu. And I am Nyamgul Agadji. So glad to have you join us this Thursday morning. We're hoping that you're going to have a wonderful day. On the island, it, there were showers of blessings. I don't know what happened where you are, but uh, here it was uh, rain. When I was leaving the mainland, it hadn't started raining. Mm -hmm. But in the course of my journey, it started to drizzle, and then it began to rain when I got to the island, and you know how it is on the island. Yeah, we started for, uh, seeing the rain when we got to as far as um, at the third mainland bridge. And you know what it, what it means when it rains in, uh, uh, in Lagos. Mm -hmm. The traffic situation is always something it else. It automatically it's, it's, it's changes. crazy. So wherever you are, you have to leave now. If you were hoping to leave at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock, you have to leave now so that you get to where you are, uh, you need to get to. The island, most places are usually flooded, or at least the water level uh, when, you're, when, you're, when you're going into the island uh, is always really high. So wherever you are, you have to start making that journey right now. Yeah, but of course, if you're new in Lagos, that's when this information may really be very, um, mm -hmm. very important to you. But if you're not new in Lagos and you don't know what to do already, you're on your <laughs> own. You're on a very long thing. All right, our very first top trend in today, former Speaker Bajabia Mila has resigned from House of Representatives. Nyambu, yesterday you were asking the question, mm -hmm. he go, is he supposed to be able to combine the two? Yeah, yeah, no. And, and, and he has done the needful, he has resigned. I, um, just, I just don't know why he had to resign and become the um, chief of staff. Is it because of loyalty to the president, Tinubu, because he has been a very loyal person to Tinubu since uh, 1999? Is it because of that loyalty or is, is it because uh, we have now rated the office of the chief of staff, which to me is not as great as being a lawmaker, to that status where you can resign. A one-time speaker, the immediate past speaker, resigns as a lawmaker that has been elected into office to come and be a chief of staff. I mean, what really is the importance of that of, uh, posi uh, position that someone will leave lawmaking to come and occupy? Perhaps the question is, why is it important to him that he should occupy that office? Mm. That so, is the question. So maybe, maybe uh, him, Nigerians have Why made... is it important to him? And you, you made, this is a very cogent question you're asking. And you've already proffered some of the an answer to it. Is it because of his closeness, loyalty mm -hmm, yeah. to President Tinubu? Of course, you know, he and Dele Alake have been with Mr. Tinubu for a very long time. Mm. And so you would expect that him being the president now, they would really want to rally around him closely, mm. closer than being in the legislature while he's an executive. I think that's what's playing out. He wants to be in the executive with him, close enough to be as helpful as he possibly can. You know, I, I thought if you're placing your people in various places, strategic positions, mm. uh, you should put those that you trust also in the legislature and then 
other people. Why did you think he made sure cabinet? that Akpabio was there? <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's another. That's another thing. That's Why another thing. Why do you think it's all that played out yeah. with regards to the leadership of the National Assembly? But, he had vested interest in it. By the way, Akpabio said something that is very, in small words, they are the same things that uh, Lawan said before he came or when he came into office that whatever law needs to be passed, whatever, they are not going to oppose the, the president. They are going to make sure that they pass the laws that they need to pass. And he, the way he said it was just like Lawan was saying, that there will be no opposition in any form. It is only the House of Rep Speaker that said whenever it, is, said it clashes, yeah, whenever it clashes with the interest of the people, they are going to go against the, the executive. That's, that's, that's what the Speaker of the House of Representatives said. But Akbabio uh, seemed to give a, an open check to the executive that whatever comes, they are going to do it. And another thing that I wanted to ask, uh, if we had a lawyer in the House who would have been, uh, he said that if the fuel subsidy removal needs legislation to back it, they are going to give it. So my question to myself was, so it didn't have legislative backing and he just went ahead and removed it. Is that supposed to be done? Is that legal even? So uh, if you're going to remove it before you look, look for legislative backing, that means it's illegal. You didn't remove it the way you should, you should remove it. Because if it needs legislative backing, he shouldn't have removed it before it. But I don't know. Maybe Akpavio didn't know that it had legislative backing and all that. Let's see how it plays out. No, let's he, see. He, he, but, well, the... The, the the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, I'm moving from that, to, to <laughs> say that they will now have to conduct a fresh election for, you know, to Bajabiyamila. fill the seats of mm. Femi Bajabiamila, who has just resigned mm. from his own set. Okay. Uh, they need to do that. They will do that. Let's see how it goes. Will they use beavers? I you know, Beaver doesn't work. It works for other, you know, levels of, you know, offices. Mm. It's the presidency that Beaver. Oh, okay, I see. Work. So okay. it should work here. So Sir Larry constituency one mm. should be getting set for that election. Yeah. So uh, two places, two, two seats were freed up because of the presidency of Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu. Uh, one of them was uh, uh, where the wife, um, Remy Tinubu, used mm -hmm, to be mm -hmm. uh, the senator. And now, Bajabia Mila House of uh, Reps, that position has been freed up. So, two Lagos boys or two Lagos girls? <laughs> oh, Lagos <laughs> boy and girl. Yeah, and girl are going I to I imagine get that, that uh, Mrs. Uh, Tinubu would want a woman to fill in her space. Cause yeah, yeah, a woman filled in, actually. Mm -hmm. um, one time, uh, Deputy Governor, uh, what's the name again? But the one time deputy governor, I think under uh, Ambodi, oh. uh, was the one who took the position. So oh, she's, yes. she's oh, yes. now the oh, senator. Oh, yes, I do remember. Mm -hmm. All right, so our second top trend in FG to introduce tuition fees in universities. That's federal government is set to introduce fees in federal universities, polytechnics, and other tertiary institutions following the signing of the student loan bill. Uh, well, a lot of people applauded the federal government for this uh, loan thing until I read what uh, the ASU president or Sodeke was saying about this whole thing. That the universities, as we have them now, do not have tuition fees as it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have other fees and all that, but they don't have tuition fees. So if you're introducing loans, student loans, and then introducing tuition fees, it might come to the point where students may not even have that kind of opportunity which the loans is supposed to give them to go to school. And if they do go to school, how is the repayment going to be? Are they, are they jobs, ready jobs that they can leave school and come and work and have the jobs to pay back? Is there data enough to, to follow these people and find out that they're working whether in the private sector or they're self-employed and all that and all that. So it's a problem, which means it's like they say about the devil. He gives you with the right hand and he collects with the left or gives you with the left and collects with the right. I'm so, trying to bring out a list that I saw in the course of the week. You know, this is not the first time student loan um, it has been brought to fore in our, in our space um, as far back as, all right, I, yeah. I want to bring out, there's this um, list of defaulters way back mm. uh, when they executed the same thing, student loan. So this time around, they have to, remember I did say we, we, we need to see the modalities 
of how this is going to play out. Mm -hmm. And so once we are able to get a look at, I, I, we've seen a bit of clarity, um, and I did say also they need to create jobs, Yeah. just as you have rightly stated. There is a need to create jobs so that when the students take these loans, they can pay back the loans. So, but it would have been very, very nice if the loans are given to pay for the things that are required in the university now without having to introduce tuition fee, which is not in the university system right mm -hmm. now. Because if you're introducing tuition fees and then you're giving loans, it, it doesn't really make any difference. We're finding it difficult to send our children to school or for people to go to school right now. Mm -hmm. And then you're saying you're going to help us, but you're going to give us a bill which we did not incur before now. So, I don't know. Okay, let me read this. Let me read this. Uh, the Nigerian Student Loan Board is regrettably publishing the list of the particularly uh, of the following Nigerians who gave false address and names of non-existing guarantors to the board when they were students in their respective institutions of higher learning in the country for the purpose of obtaining loans, all right? Mm. And said, so the board hereby appeals to members of the public in general in the appropriate cases where the Nigerians have already been employed you know, particularly in the of the list which have been updated, uh, consist of the whatever, up to March thirty first, nineteen eighty, and so they gave a list of students uh, who defaulted in paying back the loans they collected around that time, and so you have names of students in different tertiary institutions. Here you have those as far back as nineteen seventy three, nineteen seventy two. Yeah. This, so this is not the first time we're having Nigerians are being given loans to go to school. But obviously, we need to work out the modalities, um, beef it up, uh, uh, make it more reliable and efficient in order to be able to get this, recoup the loans. Yeah, but it starts with making sure that they get jobs afterwards. So I imagine that the president who has reignited this mm -hmm. would have also put in plan... Uh, put in place, or be planning to put in place, measures to make sure that they get jobs, create jobs. Although we know that it's not the primary responsibility of the government to create jobs, but to create the enabling environment yeah. for businesses to thrive and create jobs. Then how, how are we going to get the, the data that it will, will... Because loans in Nigeria uh, have always suffered... Um, in terms of repayment, mm. we've talked about um, the ag agricultural loans, the uh, anchor borrowers program, how many billions were lost to that because people didn't return. We've talked about uh, the trader money that they were supposed to pay back and all that. Virtually nobody paid back and all that. So what's the reason? Have those things been addressed? I know that on, the, on um, Democracy Day, the president also signed another bill into law uh, of data protection. <coughs> Sorry. Excuse me. Data protection. And he said he hopes that that uh, bill that has been signed into law will make, uh, will create up to 500,000 jobs. Uh, within the course of whatever, I, I don't know, there was no time frame for the creation of 500,000 jobs, whether it's mm -hmm. going to be in eight years or they are going to be in four years or in two years, I don't know that. But at least he has done something that he hopes will create 500,000 jobs. Mm -hmm. But the fear is we just drop figures all the time. <laughs> we don't even know how, how those figures came about. We just drop the figures. If our population, even in this country, they say it's, uh, it's not an accurate figure, it's an imagined figure or a, an estimated figure, then what are we talking about? So if they can address all these things and the loans come fine, but let the loans not add the burden to the people of Nigeria. Some are even calling for outright free education, never mind the loan. All right. Um, or strengthening of the scholarship. Yeah. Some are saying, calling for outright, just as it was back then in the times of Chief Awolowo, that they should give free education instead of this loan. 
But of course, we know that these loans are not entirely bad if they are well they're not, implemented. No. If they are well implemented, and if students will be able to get jobs when they come out. But as I said, I imagine that the president who is reenacting this uh, would have factored in the need for students to be able to get employed when they finish school, so that they can pay. I just read out. Uh, how, albeit not very smoothly, uh, that message from way back when uh, loans were given to people back in the days 72, 1972, 1973, and there were defaulters. And, and so we don't want to see a situation where this would just be one of those things like the anchor borrower's mm. money and school feeding scheme that didn't fly <laughs> very well. By the way, did you hear that uh, the... Uh, central, uh, the governor of the central, former governor of the central bank, or suspended governor of the central bank, said that he was giving out, is it 500 billion? Monthly. Naira monthly to, to the humanitarian, humanitarian ministry. Yeah, for the feeding program and for life to be better for Nigerians. I'm sure the president may have done that thinking that he's doing well for Nigeria and trusting the person who is in charge to do the needful. Unfortunately, Nigerians didn't see that. 500 billion monthly? monthly. Wow. And Nigeria, the psyche of Nigerians really suffering so much. With all these being revealed all the time, Nigerians surely... And a lot will come. A lot more will come. Exactly. Yeah, You're so. watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll give you the weather report and then come back with Off the Press. Stay with us. <laughs>